I've had several questions just this morning where people have reached out and asked for my personal opinion as to how I feel about this pandemic and what's actually happening uh, happening as people get restless. So uh, this episode is going to be heartfelt and I will share from my heart as I uh, express my perspective on it and I don't need to be right and I don't need to make other people wrong, which is why my message uh, has a chance of being heard because it's based on sound logic and not all the emotion. I hope this allows you to hear some truth that you know in your heart is there but being covered up by half-truths. My wish for you is that you can allow a message of hope to penetrate the lies, the distortion of the truth, and the slow cooking that's been happening to us as human beings by following the mainstream narrative, the official narrative that is designed for the masses to control that behavior. Welcome to Frankly Speaking with Dr. Wade. This show was created for and inspired by the thousands of patients I've served, so it's time for me to speak up and speak out on their behalf. With a wide range of experts, we bring you weekly insights, diving deep into topics of controversy to bust through the sugar coating that keeps you and your family stuck in the mainstream. So it started out with a dear friend reaching out and asking me exactly what I felt about this whole process. What, what did I really see as the cause, the distortion, the reality. And I am hesitant to express how I feel politically in many arenas because I'm also involved. And I have great respect for people's own belief systems to the point where I, I understand they're going to have their version of, of their truth and that's okay. And we all have our belief systems and we all see through a lens. So number one, I'm not here to make someone wrong. Number two, I am not here stating that this is all factual data, but I'm going to give you my opinion based on the facts as I continue every day, as I research, as I apply it, as I apply information through a lens of understanding health, human behavior, the power of the mind, what science has told us is the truth and what we know physiologically is the truth that's based on literally 500 million years of evolutionary change to the human body and our immune system and the response of our immune system to pathogens. So let's start with that comment. Number one, first premise is the body is self-healing, self-regulating. In all of this self-healing, self-regulation is an inside-out job. It's not an outside-in job. This half-truth you've been told and you've been purported to believe is the first breakdown in what's called the germ theory. The germ theory isn't the germ law. It's called the germ theory, and it was postulated in 1865 when Robert Cook postulated the germ theory, which was the beginning of using microbes and germs and pathogens of all sorts as the cause of disease. Now I'm going to ask you something. Humans have evolved long before 1865. In 1865, when that germ theory was postulated, that theory, theory, is based on an outside-in approach that you're incapable, that your body is incapable of survival and thrival unless you have a drug put in your body to resist those germs and that everywhere it exists the need to have sterility and no germs. Well, that first premise is the sacred cow of everything built on top of it. And if and when that shatters, which I believe is coming down the road, is that human beings will survive this. Human beings are resilient. 500 million years of your adaptive genetic code evolving to microorganisms. That includes viruses, bacteria, fungus, and parasites, the top 
four. Among other things, we haven't labeled and understood completely in all the subspecies of that. So the ability to adapt and have an immune system that is so responsive on the inside that adapts and reacts to our environment, our first line of defense is our skin, our first barrier. You have, through mucous membranes and all the layers of epithelial tissue inside that takes up the nasal passage, the digestive tract, which is actually external to the body, believe it or not. So from the mouth down to the butt, the anus, you literally have an external tube. So food goes through that tube and our body either breaks it down and gets it into the system or it doesn't get into the system and it goes out as waste. So that tube, that external environment also makes up part of this respiratory tract slash digestive tract. In other words, the surface area of our first line of defense. The stomach's included in that, the esophagus, uh, the respiratory pathway from the bronchial and the lungs and all the alveoli. So what happens here, and we know that this COVID, number one, you're given the information that it's COVID-19. I get it. Period. Done. I'm not here to argue that point, but I'm going to ask you a question. What if this is a version of the SARS and it's actually COV2? So that is arguably what we're really dealing with. And that requires, first of all, respect and consideration. So in no way, shape or form am I stating that we should discount Okay, lives and taking precaution. Not at all. In fact, my first disclaimer is this is information. This is an opinion. I'm not telling you that I treat, cure, or fix any of that. I don't. I absolutely do not, nor does any chiropractor, nor is any chiropractor stating that they treat, cure, or fix any viral, bacterial, fungal, or parasitic infections. Chiropractors restore nerve function, which influences the whole body. Period. Done. End of comment. With that said, when we understand that this mutation of this man-made version is what it is, I don't have all the answers as to why or who, but it exists, and here we are in this process. But are human beings capable of defending themselves? We've shown it. We will continue to show it. What's the underlying factor? What's the underlying directive? Well, the directive is the first question I have for you, who owns the news stations? Have you asked that question? Who owns the news stations that you're given one-sided or half-truth information and you have your whole life? For those of us near 50, those of us near 70, we've never seen anybody, anything like this in the U.S., okay, in our lifetimes, in the world, in our lifetimes, because of the strong foothold and the absolute bold, I mean outrageous asks by one particular party that's going on. And the directive that that party potentially is gone overboard by extreme nature and is no longer in hiding as to many things that are extremely disrupting the human being and humans being in our existence. Now, that means Hollywood, there's a shakedown going on. If you're not aware of that, get a clue. If you're not aware that celebrities have been using a drug to keep them youthful that is called adrenochrome, that has been abused, used, it's absolutely outrageous, and many people can't handle the magnitude of this, but it involves human trafficking which is worldwide. It involves the takedown of leaders who are absolutely involved and who have been involved and who have perpetuated this and who create laws to perpetuate it while they gain control of human beings. And some of you are, can't even listen to this because you, you think it's so ridiculous because your bubble is believing that the mainstream media is actually telling you the truth. They're programming you based on the ownership. There's mainly six owners of all the news stations that you get, CNN, Fox, ABC, CBS, NBC, name it. They're controlled. That's why you see a pharmaceutical approach for everything. That's why you see anybody who says anything outside of the official narrative is, is censored, is not purported. 
they're not going to report on real news. They can't. They won't. The whole dissemination system, that's why they call it paid programming. You're literally, we are literally paying for our cable slash use of information that's coming to destroy us. Keeping you asleep is the goal, modifying and controlling your behavior. The opinion here is sound. It's wake up and respect that there is a much higher agenda. And if you can't see it, and it is hiding in plain sight, look on the fall, the fall cabal. It's grotesque, but it's well done documentary. And all my only wish for you is that you walk away with questions. That's it. What if this were to be going on right, right in front of us? What if this has been the agenda all along? What if I don't believe something in there to be true? What if I continue the path that I've been on and trusting all of our government officials as though they have my best interests in mind? Because this is about what's been going on really. Let's talk about last fall. And this has been going on for years. One party has tried to take away and disarm you, period. How is that? How would that serve them right now? How would that serve that party? Number two, what has been being pushed through on your personal health freedoms? Your constitutional right to say no about a drug that goes into your body, whether it's a vaccine or a statin drug or a high blood pressure med or whatever the case may be. You are losing your right to say no, and pharmaceuticals are gaining the right to say yes, and you have zero control. The next thing is the chip. The next thing is you cannot travel. You cannot go anywhere. You are imprisoned right now in your home. You are imprisoned to live and be manipulated by this so the agenda is served, which is mandatory vaccinations down the road. This is just an opinion. But when you see the magnitude of what's happening, this is unprecedented for us in our lifetimes. That's how bold this is. They've removed any obstacles. They are clearly moving to take your rights away and actually actually just abolish them. No more choice. All reactivity. The germ kills, which means you can't survive without the, the artificial resistance of chemicals going in. No need to say no because they have all your best interests in mind. Yeah, there's sarcasm there. It's so ridiculously non-human and you've been so trained and numbed. That's why the shows with Netflix, you start looking into what happens with how they've desensitized you to what's normal. That's why there's more sex on TVs. That's why it's expanding in terms of what you're able to see what's normal because they've desensitized us to where it's moving. I mean, just start looking at a couple, look at Fall Cabal on YouTube. There's 10 episodes. It's not going to take you 10 hours. It's going to take you maybe two and a half to three and a half hours. I can't recall exactly, but go episode to episode. There's some episodes that are much more graphic, but that is a start. And some of you will not be able to continue to watch that. I get it. And that's okay. And this is about you understanding that there is darkness that needs to be aware of so that we can be of light on the other side and being of light is what we all need to move forward. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm hopeful. I'm a, I'm a bit scared, but I'm not, I'm not afraid of what we can do as human beings. I'm not afraid of the power we have when we stand up together and just acknowledge that this exists and what are we going to do about it today to move forward and how are we going to move forward by standing up for our personal health freedoms, for our own constitutional rights to take back this world literally and just one one person at a time to be able to empower them on what the truth is about health and healing and what this real undertone of movement politically is directed towards. So what do I think about it? I think we've been manipulated as human beings. I think we're being told lies through the mainstream media because they're owned by a select few elites and globalists in the world. And when you train people how to think and what to think, it's a form of what's called 
controlled opposition by keeping everyone silent and keeping them in a fearful mode. Not only are you actually, the, the, the side effect and the byproduct is immunosuppression. You have a weakened immune system by isolating you. That's why isolation was there in prison camps. That's why it's there in prison because when someone breaks the rules already imprisoned, then the next phase is isolation because it's extremely destructive on the human psyche and the body. And when we isolate ourselves, we prolong what's called herd immunity, natural immunity by exposure. Because again, the majority of folks that have experienced COVID or even uh, the flu and or whether it's type A, uh, swine flu or H1N1, and you name it, all along the way in terms of exposures, the body's ability inside internally through our innate immune system, which then has a, a next phase called our adaptive immune system. And then there's also the complementary immune system. And that is a longer conversation in this. And I have podcasts and interviews on that. And I have educational uh, videos on that, which you can search, you can find. And there's some being created as we speak. But the reality is you're not being told the truth. You're, you're told half-truths with a directive of through the official narrative, controlling behaviors and guiding your thought process and thereby controlling opposition. And I'm not here to be destructive with that. I'm here to be constructive and awakening to stand up for just simple your rights and what kind of world do you want to live in tomorrow? What kind of sporting events do you want to attend? What kind of sporting events do you want to participate in? How do you want to communicate with your family and friends? Do you want to be told you can't hug anybody or shake anyone's hand anymore? Are we are we truly going to going to Go back to that style of living because someone has created so much fear in us that that's the way we're going to live in the future? I don't think so, Charlie. I have no intention of living my life in a bubble or behind a mask or in rubber gloves. You might as well have a body condom. And that is supposed to be the only way you can live and survive in this. Wow, people think about it. Respect the state we're in respect the possibility that yes, people will die from this, but the numbers were mag, just magnanimously abused and oversighted. And it's supposed to just be overlooked like, oh, well, they made a mistake. They didn't make a mistake. They possibly did that for a reason. Just ask the question. But really, they made a mistake. They understand what it's like to have emotional warfare or how about an invisible enemy it doesn't mean the enemy doesn't exist you just can't see it again ask the question what if and who benefits by me struggling through this what party benefits what's the party's agenda they couldn't be that terrible they couldn't be that bad no that's not the question that's your cognitive dissonance you're not able to see past your bubble of reality because you can't accept the possibility that someone could be that destructive and evil. And that that's why there's a word that was created by the CIA years ago that says conspiracy. It's a way to shove somebody's opinion outside of the mainstream official narrative as a crackpot, whack job, distortion, kook, you name it. It stops you, the listener, from actually being awake. So throw this conspiracy theory out and start asking questions like a critical thinker and not living in fear. So critical thinking doesn't mean you live in fear. It certainly doesn't mean you distrust everything. You just literally can think and ask a freaking question. Logically, does this make sense that the body doesn't have its own built-in mechanism to address and adapt to viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites. Does it not? Who in 1941 made it accessible and actually forced iron, which is a known carcinogen, into your body in, in nine different forms into your food sources? Who did that? A legislator out in New Jersey. Delaney, there's a name for you. That in 1941... What was going on around 1941, people? What historical event was going around in 1941? 
how does recurring wars have anything to do with the future of the power of control? I'm not going to answer that. I don't have the answer. There's so many things to talk about. But I'm really here to say and answer the question from people that have said, how do you really feel about it? I feel you've been lied to. I feel like there is concern with COVID. There's concern about the next biological warfare. But I also see the bigger picture. The chessboard pieces being moved are about a globalist movement to control human beings and create a dependency. Look at the slippery Bill G. You know who I'm talking about with the 2030 agenda of having you chipped and having you with your papers that you need to be updated as an adult to the mainstream's recommendation, which is from another dirty, corrupt organization created, CDC. The FDA, you're supposed to trust them, which is in cahoots with Big Pharma, which is why, and again, here's another thing, vaccines over time, they're a profitable industry because there's no recourse for pharmaceutical companies. While mainstream research for them has to have double blind clinical studies that actually show less toxicity and less damage to get a drug to the market. Well, they're not as profitable as they used to be per Dr. Shiva and his information that's as an MIT immunologist and immunological researcher and entrepreneur who calls out the fact that the CDC, Fauci, and all this information has been based on an old, an old archaic scientific application, which is not how the immune system works. Germs don't cause disease. Germs are opportunistic in nature, which means they are always there and they require a host that actually allows them to flourish. 380 trillion viruses in your body right now 60 trillion bacteria in your body right now, 6 trillion cells of you right now. You're more bacteria and viruses and fungi and parasites than you are yourself. The key is germs are trying to survive. Some of them truly benefit us, which is what's happened over the over 500 million years in terms of exposure. It's created this inner responsive mechanism. You have macrophages below the surface that are sentinels throughout your body to defend the first line of defense, which is your skin and respiratory pathways, that if something punctures it or breaks it, whether it's a sliver in the big toe or you step into the lake and you cut yourself on a piece of glass from a beer bottle and now you're bleeding and then you get dirty water in there, your body has a response to that. And some of you who haven't taken care of your body well at all are going to have a more infectious quote-unquote response as a result of that small little bitty pathogen having a chance to to do something damaging to a body that's been weakened by the lifestyle of us Americans, which is SAD, the standard American diet, which is fortified foods high in iron, creating oxidative stress and destroying and also making a food source for bacteria and pathogens in your body. What? What? You mean iron, high levels of iron in the body actually promote bacterial growth? Yes, pathogens feed on iron. Isn't that crazy? No, it's not. So those are just some things. It's not like you can just take vitamin C if you continue to smoke, drink soda every day, and eat crap, eat high carbs, eat simple carbs. The other day I'm driving down uh, a main artery in, in Madison in terms of a road, and I I had to swerve out of my right lane into the left just a bit to avoid traffic that was now extending into the main road from a fast food restaurant that had roughly 22 cars as I counted because traffic slowed right there. I look back and I counted and they're sticking in the street and it wraps around the whole building in terms of a lane. So they're prepared for a line and it's still in the street, just a sidebar. And that fascinates me. You know why? Because the human body is incredibly resilient. Many of those people would live and have already been exposed and are living as a result of it. So that is crazy how incredible and resilient your body is, even when you treat it like crap. 
So some of you are like, well, I'm going to still smoke. Guess what? I don't have the answer. Your body's amazing. Everyone responds differently. Some don't do well after one cigarette. Some can smoke 10 packs a day and live till 70. I'm not here to say that's uh, that I have the answer for it other than the body's amazing and you have your genetic familial traits that allow you to either adapt to that well or not. Is it an unhealthy thing? Well, sure it is, but that's your choice. And you can continue to believe how well it is, much like the smoking industry still sells cigarettes. Isn't that fascinating? Completely. Where we sit is you have a choice to wake up or fall or stay asleep. Waking up is uncomfortable. Waking up can hurt. In other words, gaining access to the truth will set you free, but first it will hurt. And it, I can almost guarantee it's going to hurt. I've changed since I had exposure to understanding the darkness that, that, that still exists in this world. And you cannot run from that darkness. You need to stand up to the reality that exists, but you do not have to accept that it's going to take control and power over you and the rest of your brethren, your sisters, your brothers. And I mean, we are all in this together. It is time to stand up. That's my opinion. And I believe this is a great time for human beings. It's a great time for America. It's a great time for an awakening and a change and a true change on how this, how we live because the kids need our help. Pedophilic, child trafficking, sex trafficking goes right along with drug trafficking. That's why there's many things going on right now while we are quarantined, while we are stuck here, but... There are party moves that are trying to make everything our president, Trump, has done to make him look bad and fail. And that isn't just a party that's ticked off. It is a worldwide movement to perpetuate this global ring of serving a really, really, really dark master. And for those of you who won't wake up to that, so be it. For those of you who are ready to hear this message and open up to possibility and take charge and lead, I embrace, I welcome, I am up for the challenge, and I invite you to step into your warrior and step into your strength and realize as a human being you ha you've been endowed. Number one, you're here at this time, which means the universe needs you. Number two, we are in a microcosm. This earth is a microcosm from a macrocosm. There's energy and potential life forms. Obviously, as you know, outside, if you can't fathom that, stay in your bubble. You've been shielded. You've been controlled in what to believe. And anything outside of that controlled belief is crazy. Ask better questions. Expand your consciousness. Look to your brethren and support them. Reach out. Reach out and assist. Peace and love and hope. Endurance. Resilience. Strength. Confidence. Competence. Respect. Consideration. Appreciation. And gratitude. Today, be joyful in your heart, knowing you're here right now in the present to make a difference. Until next time, ciao. Thank you much for listening to this week's episode. I look forward to any feedback and or questions you might have. Direct them to our Facebook page, Frankly Speaking, Dr. Wade at Facebook. Okay, my fellow health warriors, it's time to head over to iTunes, frankly speaking, drwade.com. There you can rate, review, and subscribe as well as share so more of our brothers and sisters can grow to realize their voice. Speaking up means you matter. So get on it. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views expressed are not medical advice and are not meant to replace the medical advice of your doctor. This podcast, including Dr. Wade Anderson and his guests, disclaim responsibility for any adverse effects you may experience from the specific use of information contained herein. 
Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse and accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about the guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements and advertisements for such services or product. Individuals on this podcast may have direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician. 